Miss Dunn, call up that map company and ask them if they have any other maps. Yes, Mrs. Stark. Here it is. I found it. Where? In Arkansas. Right here. Pine Ridge, Arkansas. Ah. Partner in the firm of Edwards and Peabody Old Mercantile Establishment in Pine Ridge. All right, Miss Dunn, get that letter in the mail. Yes, Mr. Stark. Oh, uh, you better send it airmail. Oh, yes, Mr. Stark. Uh, airmail special. Yes, dear. Uh, yes, Mr. Stark. Yes. Morning, Lum. Morning, Abner. Morning, Ulysses. Ain't saw you around for several days, Ulysses. No, mail's been kind of slow coming in. Besides, I wanted to wait till I got a full sack before I started out. Natural, natural. It's any one thing I hate is toting around a half-empty sack of mail. Sure. Besides, I've been trying to save on rubber. Save on rubber? Yeah, yeah. You ain't got no automobile. <laughs> no, my heels, my heels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I got a letter here for you, too, Abner. Well, oh, good for me. Move right there, Lon. Mmm. Gomer Bates is over Cherry Hill, visiting relays. Well, I do know. <laughs> Went to a picnic, and him and another feller won the three-legged race. Huh. I never know Gomer's three-legged. Ah, uh, here's your letter, Abner. Come about a week ago. Special deliver. Special deliver? Yeah. And he's, what's that? I don't know, Lum. I've been looking at that stamp for the last three or four days, trying to figure out what that 10 cent stamp is for. Sounds extra, huh? Yeah. I'm aiming to ask the inspector just what that stamp is for the next time he comes through here. Yeah, more than likely something new to give him to it up. What'd the letter have to say, Ulysses? Move on. I don't know, Abner. It's sealed up. Oh. Uh, there it is. Well, read it, read it, read it. You want me to read it for you? Yeah, go ahead, I'll be in here. Well, I'll do it, but I never like to read other people's mail. I care, man. Mr. Abner Peabody, Pine Ridge, Arkansas. Dear Mr. Peabody, according to the terms of the will of your late uncle, Ernest L. Peabody, you have inherited complete ownership of the C&O Railroad. Oh, right there. Please call at our office to settle details at your earliest convenience. Yours truly, J.J. Stark. Stark, Stark. That's a familiar name. Move on. Go on. Uh, Granny, I believe I got your corner this time, Abner. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, guess we'll be moving on with the mail. Sorry to hear about your uncle. Yeah, I'll move right there. Might have thought of him leave your railroad. Might. Railroad? Jumping and Jimmy and Chris Abner, you've inherited a railroad. Railroad? Yes, Where? Sir. Right here it is in black and white. Tight road and everything. A railroad. Do you know? That's in Chicago, Ohio. Abner's inherited trains and engines. Abner Peabody, president. <laughs> Abner, I got a surprise for you. Huh? I brought you a present. A present? <laughs> well, <laughs> what is it, Long? Conductor's cap. For me? Why, sure. Well, I do know. That ain't all, either. Looky there. What's that? It's a punch. Punch? Yeah, a conductor's got to have a punch to punch tickets with, ain't it? Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I thought I was going to be president, Lon. Well, I know you did say that, Abner, and I got to studying about it. The president don't even get to ride on the train. He don't, huh? Well, I know. He sits in office back there in Chicago. Oh, well, I don't want to be president then. No, no sir. sir. <laughs> no, so, sir. if you're looking for somebody to sort of take that job of president off your hands, I'll do it for you. Would you show it us, Lon? Why, sure. I know that it's a deal there. <laughs> Fact is, I've been studying about it, Abner. I've got some big ideas figured out for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of them so big to scare me. Well, what are they? What are they? Well, maybe I better sit down at my desk. Oh, right sure, there. yes. Sit right there. Sit right there. That's a president's chair. <laughs> Mom Edder's president. Oh, yeah. All right, doggies, you do get things did in a hurry, don't you? I told you, you got a president now. <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> now, the first idea I had, Evelyn, we ought to run a spur line into the county seat. A spur line? Yeah, bring some of your trains down here and just run them backwards and forwards. Oh! <laughs> Well, Lom, these folks ain't gonna let us run trains backwards and forwards across their farms. We'll buy their farms, get what they call right-of-ways. 
Well, where do we get the money to do that with? I've done got that all figured out. <laughs> Told you you had a president. Yeah. <laughs> we'll sell stock to the folks here in Pine Ridge in your railroad company. Oh. Well, you reckon that's a safe invest for them? With you as conductor and me as president. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> we'll make them all rich. Everybody a thousand there. That's our motto. <laughs> well, put her there. Yes, sir. You sure look fancy in outfit with all them stripes and everything. <laughs> well, see, all conductors wear them. Uh, that's to show how long you've been working for the railroad. Oh. Now, Abner, do you think it's a good idea for me to put my money in this new railroad? I think it's the finest thing that ever hit Pine Ridge, Mamie. And Lum says it's a good invest. Well, if Lum says so, I'll take my savings out of the bank in the morning. Well, good for you, wonderful world. I've been saving up a long time. But I know I can trust you, Lum. I'll guarantee you won't have no regrets, Grandma. <laughs> Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand and five and one is ten thousand and six dollars. Well, don't you worry, Lum. I'll have the right to weigh all signed and sealed for you before you get back from Chicago. Well, good for you, Squire. <laughs> we knowed we could depend on it. We figured a fair price for their land. Ooh. We want this railroad to do good for everybody. Yes, sir. Everybody a thousand there. That's our motto. Yeah. Well, come on, Lum. We better get started. Yeah. All aboard! <laughs> You ever see the lock of folks in your life? Yeah, the Columbia Exposition must still be going on. Hi, right, Granny, there's that hotel that fella on the train told us to stop at. Right over there? Hotel Richmore. Yes, sir, that's it. Sure Come on. on. I'm scared this place looks a little fancy for us, Mom. Oh, don't be silly, Abner. Don't forget we're a couple of railroad executives now. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Peabody's my name. Oh. You're kind of new at this, ain't you, bud? I've been conducting that long. Yeah, just... Call me a taxi. Mom, call me a taxi. Oh, all right. You're a taxi. Yes, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon. Have you registered? Oh, well, we're way on or too old for the draft. Yeah. Is the landlady in? Landlady? Oh, oh really, I, I don't think you'd feel at home here. Yeah. Well, we weren't aiming on making our home here. We just wanted to board here two or three days. Oh, well, uh, have you any letter of credit or uh, credentials? Credentials? Oh, yeah. Uh, show him that letter you got from the lawyers, Edna. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got that. Here, compliments of the head conductor. Just put your name in there if you ever want to travel. <laughs> why, why, thank you, Mr. Peabody. A thousand pardons and my compliments, Mr. Edwards. Uh, welcome to the Ritzmore Hotel. Our entire staff is at your disposal. Well, that's mighty thoughty of you. But all we wanted was just a small... Yes, yes, I know exactly what you want. You leave everything to me. Front. Now, if there's anything else we can do, anything at all, why... Uh, maybe you could tell us how to get to this lawyer's office. That's the first thing we've got to do. Of course, of course. First things first, I always say. <laughs> 41, call me a taxi. What does everybody want to be called a taxi for? I'll explain that to you later. Now, you step right outside, and you'll find your cab waiting. You tell the driver you want to go to the bar building. All right, much obliged. I wonder if you could watch your valises first while uh, we're gone. Yes, uh, yes, of course. I'll send them right up to your suite. <laughs> <laughs> what loft is it we're looking for, Long? Twenty-four. I'll never make it. <laughs> All right, Granny Zabner, this is worse than trying to climb old Piney Mountain. Uh, 
Coming back, I believe it'd be quicker to jump out of one of these windows. As long as we ain't trying to walk up to see Uncle Ernie, Fairly. Hurry up, Abner. I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah, more to a friend. More to a friend. Granny's, I've lost count, Abner. You mean we gotta go clean back down the bottom and start over again? I reckon so. Swan to goodness. Wait a minute. Granny's, no wonder we're so tired, Abner. Look in there, we've climbed 2,400 floors. Uh-huh. 2,420? Yeah. <laughs> Granny's, there ought to be somebody. Wait a minute, Abner. Oh. Looky yonder. There it is now. Stark and Stark, lawyers. Well, it's no wonder Uncle Ernie's passed away so soon. One trip up here would kill him. Well, you see, I really know nothing about this matter. Mr. J.J. Stark is handling it personally. He'll be back in a few days. In a few days? Well, we got to get back to Pine Ridge. Jim folks is waiting for us. I'm so. Uh. Do you reckon there'd be any objections if me and Abner went and looked the railroad over before Mr. Stark gets back? We won't hurt nothing on us, we won't. I guess it'll be all right. Well, good. Now, how do we get to where it's at? Well, you remember the Chicago depot you came into? Came into? Did I inherit that, too? Well, you take a train out of there to Gold City. Gold City? Just an overnight trip, I'd say. There you are. <laughs> Old City Junction. C&O, huh? Uh-huh. Streamliner ought to be along right now. <laughs> there she comes. My granny's a horde got out there and flagged them down. Tough charge right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, I just can't hardly believe it. That's all mine. No. Yours? My Uncle Ernest left it to me. Ernest Peabody? Why, sure. Did you know him? Know him? <laughs> Used to sit around and swap lines with him. Well... That's his line right there. <laughs> yeah, we know it. Huh? Come on, I'll show it to you. Yep, old Ernie was a character, all right. Called it the C&O. Short for Chinnacoot and Orville. That was the name of his gold mine he staked out around here about 50 years ago. Well, is this all that's left of the C&O? Yes, Ernie built this line to carry the ore down to Smelter. But most of the track's gone now. Well, as long as it's my property, Lum, I might as well look over what's left of it, I reckon. Yeah. I wouldn't go in there. I forgot to tell you that the steps are dropping. I know there's no wonder the railroad went through. Oh, oh, what about that gold mine he owned? Oh, that petered out long ago. That's what finished his railroad. Come on, Abner. Well, sorry to hear about your investment in those right away. However, your CNO line isn't a total loss. A salvage dealer has filed an offer for the property. Well, good. How much? $200. Oh. Well, that'll at least get us back to Pine Ridge, though. I strongly advise that you gentlemen accept this. I know that it's a deal. Huh? It's a deal. I'm going to take it. Will you kindly sign right there, please? Yes, sir. Right there. Uh, now then, there are a few minor things to be taken care of, such as well, uh, county tax, inheritance tax, and of course the usual executive fee, but then you just didn't understand that, I believe. Uh, how much does all that come to, Mr. Stark? Uh, $180. You mean Abner just gets $20 for his uncle dying? There is an unpaid lien of 
67 dollars. When you... Well, if that don't beat the bugs, you're fine. Uh, Abner, you owe him 47 dollars. 47 dollars? What for? Just hope we got enough left to pay it. I ought to have had more sense than to put any defendants in Uncle Ernie. Grandpa Peabody Aulis says he's the black goat of the family. What he is. Here you are. 10, 20, 30, 35, 40, 45, 46, 47 dollars. Thank you. You know how much that leaves us, Abner? Ain't got the least I had. 50 cents. <laughs> oh, uh, there is a notarizing fee. 50 cents. Come on, Abner. Let's get out of here while we can. Might I wish now Uncle Ernest hadn't a died. Now, how are we going to get back to Pine Ridge? I don't know. Hike it, or hitchhike, I reckon. Wait a minute. Uh, I granted we better telegram Squire Skimp and tell him not to buy them rights away. That's right. We better do that, Long. Well, yes, here, here, you don't aim to walk all the way down them steps, do you? Why, sure. My granny's I ain't. My feet are wore to a couple of nubs. I'm just as hard as you are, Long. Oh, come on, Abner. Just this once, let's ride the elevator. No, sir, them things is too dangerous. He must have a cucklebur in his breeches. I've never seen such a fidgety fella in my whole life. Oh, dear, oh, dear, another five minutes wasted. I'm a busy man. I'm sorry, but the doctor is still busy with a patient. We'll take care of Mr. Peabody as soon as he's through. No, I hope so. Mr. Strauss is ready now. Oh, thank you. Oh. oh. The doctor's report on Mr. Strauss will be ready in just a few minutes. For it. Uh, all right, Mr. Peabody, the doctor will see you. Mr. Peabody, there we go. Come on, hurry up. Come on. Go on, where? It's the doctor's office. Well, uh, Long, I, I believe I feel all right. Come on, let's get out of here. No, well, you better be examined while you're here, Abner. You might have some internal injuries. Here. Oh, dear, I hope not. Now, go on, you get in there for goodness sake. Now, you know, I'm a busy man. Well, look what happened to that fella. Only the patient. Oh, just the <laughs> patient. Uh, <laughs> What's the latest war news, Doc? Inhale, please. I don't inhale. Fact is, I hardly smoke at all. Mm-hmm. All right. Now say 99 and keep on saying it. 99. 99. 99. A hundred. Er, uh, 99. How old are you? Ninety-nine. Take 
noticed any marked fluctuations in your weight lately? Uh, uh, come over that again, Doc. I believe I jumped that right there. What's the most you ever weighed? Oh, uh, 138. Mm -hmm. And the least? Uh, five and a half pounds, I believe it was. Will you stop pacing? You make me nervous. I wasn't pacing. I was just walking. Well, then, let's get in step. Now, will you stop typing so loud? I'm typing as quietly as I can. Well, then, type louder. I loathe the sneaky typewriter. Well, if you ever get out in Pine Ridge, why, come see me, Doc. Thank you. Oh, 23 and a half hours leave? How wonderful. Oh, are you all right? Everything, what, what, what'd you say? Are you hurt anywhere, Abner? I don't think so, Lum. He listened at my chest with a little telephone, and then he dropped a bandage around my arm and pumped me up. But I believe it helped my leg. It feels better. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you, too. Mr. Pines, what was the name of that patient that just went out? Just a minute, dear. Um, Strauss. Strauss. Uh-huh. I like that. And what was the name of that other patient? Um, just a minute. Um, Peabody. Tea party. Oh, that would be wonderful. Give these to Miss Morris, please. Uh-huh. The campus in at 8 o'clock. I'll be there. He was in there beating me on the knee with a hammer. What? Yes, sir. What's the matter with you? Nothing. I'm on a furlough. She's on a what? On a furlough, she said. I thought she was walking. That must be the reef work. Yes. There you are, Mrs. Strutt. Gently. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Two weeks to live. Oh. Oh, grab his feet there, Abner. He's fainted. Oh, oh. I right, don't, because we ain't going to have to carry him all the way back down them stairs there, we long. No, put him in that wheelchair there. Oh, oh, oh. Is there a doctor in the house? The dog is one day gone already. Just a week and six days left. Who was it, Lum? It's a porter. Telegram. Telegram? Yes. Lum entered Richmore Hotel, Chicago, Illinois. Your telegram received too late. Have already closed for all right away and paid out $9,980. Consider this a bargain. Squire Skin. Granted. Now, what are we going to do, Lum? I don't know. We can't get out of here. We can't even pay our hotel bill. Well, I want to go back to Pine Ridge, Lum. If I'm going to die, that's where I want to do it. Well, we can't go back to Pine Ridge, Abner. We're going to have to pay back all them investors. That was their life savings. Well, I'm lonesome here, Lum. Well, I'm here, ain't I? Well, yeah. A dog can have fleas and still be lonesome, can he? Yeah. Ain't you gonna answer it? I just happen to think that ain't our ring. Well, ring them again, then. Yes, of course. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Fleming, I do hope we can keep this thing out of court. Now, uh, how high do you think we ought to go uh, to get a release? Well, it's a pretty serious case. You might start with 5,000. Say, this is silly. Hang up. But I, uh, don't you understand? You give them big ideas if you go after them. Now just sit tight and wait until they come to you. You're right. You're right. Uh, no, 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 no. I can't answer with please. Wrong number. No, sir, Abner. We've got to raise ten thousand dollars somewhere or other. Mom, um, I've got enough words of my own without thinking about that thing. Well, sit down and rest, Abner. Here, read the paper for a while. Oh, Lom, um, I can't concentrate on that. I wish I was in Pine Ridge, that's what I wish. For the land sakes. What's the matter? That article in there, death and taxes. 
I can't get away from it. Well, well read a book. Read something else. Oh, Mom, I don't want to read nothing. I'd rather just... Doggy, let me turn that radio on. Get a little music in here. Mm, Doggy, let me. Have you selected your last resting place in beautiful birch lawn? Right? That's flaming anyway. I can't stand it, Long. Control yourself, Abner. Come on. You need to lay down and get some rest. Come on. Well, Mom, I'm going to get catched up on that land down, Venice. I'd rather stay on my feet as long as I can. You know, as sick as I am, I never felt better in my life. That takes little things to do. Sees it and does it. A high man with great things to pursue dies there he knows it. Browning. No, Lum Edwards is my name. What's in a name? A rose by any other smells and so forth. Shakespeare. Come on in, Mr. Shakespeare. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Come in, Rover. That a boy. Rover? Yes, that's my dog. He's dead, but he's with me in spirit. I know just how you feel. I had a dog myself once. My granted, that's kind of dangerous work, ain't it, that winter washing? Dangerous? Well, maybe. But it pays good. If you want to advance, you got to take a chance. Else you get it in the pants. Piffle, yours truly. Hey, Granny, that's pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that's the way jobs are. The more dangerous, the more they pay. Now, take that flagpole on top of that building, for instance. They'll pay $500 for a paint job on that. But that's not for me. It's a jinx pole. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It sways in the breeze. Confidentially, three guys got jinx trying to earn that $500. No more takers. That pole still needs painting. It does, huh? Mm hmm. Hey, Granny, there's a lot of poles out there need paint, ain't they? Yes, sir. This ain't a one flag town. Old glories unpoiled all around. <laughs> Five hundred dollars, huh? That's uh -huh. right. Mom, I can't sleep. I just laid in there. After I want you to shake hands. What's he doing here? You don't know it, but there stands a friend of ours. Well, Omar Tennyson Gimple. Greetings. I'll be looking forward to other meetings. He writes poetry. Ah, <laughs> uh, Robert, come over here. Oh, that's his dog. <laughs> Are you going to be with us long? Oh, about two weeks, I reckon. Well, I hope you enjoy Chicago. Or the dog. It's his spirit. Like the poets say. You wouldn't understand. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die. Huh? Tomorrow? Uh, Abner. If a feller knowed he's gonna die pretty soon, it wouldn't make much difference to him when he died or how he died, would it? I ain't thought much about that long. Well, for instance, if this feller owed some folks back home a lot of money and he had a chance to take a job that paid real good, he ought to take it, or I reckon so. Ah, uh, Granny's put her there. You don't know it, but you've just become a flagpole painter. <laughs> flagpole? Oh, no, I ain't getting up on one of them things. No, sir. Wait a minute, Abner. If I was in your position, I wouldn't hesitate a minute. Long getting up high makes me dizzy, and it ain't a thing of doing. You and your invisible dog. Down, Mom, it's dangerous. I want to fall down that street when them cars are run over and destroy the world. Go on, stay up there. Ever ain't nothing to be scared of. Look at me. I ain't nervous a bit. No, you ain't up here neither. Go on, get the painting up there. Go on, clean up to the top. Well, Lon, let me down. Let me down now, Lon. Look out, Abner. Look what you're doing. Mind out. Oh! Look out, Lon. Grab that rope. Grab that rope. Oh. Grab that rope. Granny's, I understand what they mean by a jinx pole now. Huh? I've always wanted to pull a lucky number off of one of them punch boards. Oh! Hello, Mr. Edwards. Hello. Er. Oh, hello, Mr. Gimple. Come on in. Well, thank you. Come on over. Oh. Well, uh, how's everything with you and your partner? Not so good. He's in there asleep now. We ain't getting no furs. Hotel bills are piling up on that's too bad. That's life. It's full of strife and, uh, jive. Jive? No, but it rhymes. No. Oh. Are you still looking for risky jobs to pay big? Yeah, do you know of any more? No. Oh. But you could advertise. Advertise? Like in newspapers? That's right. 
My granny sounds like a good idea. An ad in a column might get results in full volume. <laughs> sounds good. Glad to compose it for you. Strong prose is my weakness. <laughs> Out here to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I am the new Dr. Jekyll. You see this? This is the key that opens my prison door. It frees my other self. It loses my animal that is in me. It is in you. It is in you. I ain't got no such thing in me. Well, what is it you want Abner to do? This drug I know will change me into my animal self. But I am not so sure that if he will change me back again. So I want him for my guinea pig. Guinea pig? You ain't gonna make no kind of animal out of me. <laughs> Come here, come here, come here. That beast Peabody guy, where'd he and Plato find him? Uh, Plato? Yeah, that's Plato. Put it down, put oh. it down. He's always clowning. Clowning? A great actor. Yes. He's the only grill in the world that doesn't attack you. Yes. He throws his partner 20 feet in the air. Mister is beautiful. <laughs> the only trouble is we keep running out of partners. partners. Say, what room did you say that Peabody guy was in? Uh, uh, he's, uh, he's in 713. Oh, oh. Take, take, take him out. Take this King Kong out of here. What's the matter? You ready, Terry? What do you get? Well, well, get him out of here. The very idea. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Now, wait a minute, Abner. It's just an experiment. Besides, he says he'll pay good. Looky there. There ain't nothing to it. <laughs> that looks good. I wouldn't mind drinking some of that myself. Would you, Abner? Abner. He must have went in there. Where is my guinea pig? Where is my guinea pig? Where is my guinea pig? All right, Plato, now sit down and be quiet. Where's this Peabody guy? Hey, Peabody! Where is everybody? Hey, Peabody! Hey, anybody in here? Abner. Where about you at, Abner? Just a minute, Edna. We need that thousand dollars. Go ahead, Miss Carmen. You see, the legend about the house has kept us from selling it for years. But now I have a buyer for it. If I can prove that... Never mind. Uh, prove what, Miss Carmen? My grandfather died a sudden and strange death in that house. And since that time, anyone who stays alone all night in his room, well... Uh, 
How many has there been so far? Only five. See, there are just five. And I'm sure it wasn't the ghost that got them. It was just their imagination. Uh, just their imagination, huh? Yes. I reckon they just imagine they're dead, too. Oh, no. I don't like ghosts, and I ain't gonna have nothing to do with them, and that is final. I'm sorry. Well, if you gentlemen should change your mind, you can call me. Oh, thank you. Oh, here's your handkerchief. Oh, that's very gallant of you, Mr. Edwards. Oh, not at all, not at all. I'll try to talk him into it. Oh, then I can expect to see you again soon. Perhaps dinner and dancing. I'd love to. <laughs> Goodbye, for now. Goodbye. <laughs> Uh, Granny Zapner, I believe she admires me. For the land sake. She does, I can tell. <laughs> Prettle foul. A and we're going to a dance, too. Sort of warm out this evening, ain't it, Miss Carmen? Did anybody ever tell you you're beautiful? No. Is this you having a Peabody? Oh, uh, no, that's my partner. I got a great spot for him. I'll pay him $5,000 a half the gate. We'll take the 5000 we don't want no geese. Oh, you got me wrong, chum. Uh, what, what is it you want him to do? The death leap. Abner! No! I'll explain this, neighbor. It'll take a minute. Just a minute there, pal. Have a few things I want to say. I ain't going to do it. How do you know, Abner? You don't know what it is yet. Lom, I told you I ain't... What is it? Uh, I'll explain it, Mac. The name is Higgins. It's well a minute, Higgins, they call me in my profession. Now, that you're crowd me, neighbor. Now, this death leap is, there's nothing to it, see? It's a gimmick. It's for the chumps, for the monkeys outside. And all you have to do is go up in a big planet set, see? You walk up on a cronin, and you got a big thing strapped around you with a halfpenny here and a can of stair. And on here is a big mountain. When they pull you up and you come down, nothing can happen, you understand? Well, you put that in writing. Transfer from one plane to another in midair. I don't think there's one stunt I've always wanted to see long. Now I'm going to be up there where I can't watch it. Well, I'll explain it to you when you come back. All right, Peabody, your time's come. Yeah, uh-huh. It's your turn. Come on, we're waiting for the finale. Oh, oh well, uh, uh, just postpone this. Let's talk to Mr. Higgins long. He's not around. Come on, your plane is all warmed up. It'll all be over in just a few minutes, Abner. I'm gonna do. I'm stranded. Tell Mr. Higgins we'll take half the gig. I'm sorry, Mr. Edwards. Mr. Higgins is gone. Gone? Where to? That's what we'd all like to know. Don't you get it, sucker? Higgins is gone with the dough. He's taking it on the lamb. He's scramooched. Courage, my friends. Don't take it too hard. Remember the words of the immortal bard. Who steals my purse steals trash. Tis nothing. Nothing? It was five thousand dollars. Lucre. Erstwhile filthy... Say. Speaking of Looper, you overlooked something. The bar building. Uh -huh. Those stairs you fell down were soapy, weren't they? 
That makes the building owners liable. They owe you for damages. Uh, Granny, that's right, Abner. Come on, let's get over and collect it. Oh, Mr. Edwards, you better go alone. The party, the first part, is supposed to be non compass, uh, compass uh, physicalis. Oh, yeah, sure, that's right. You write that Mr. Edwards is okay to represent you. You know, I'd like that feller all right if it weren't for that invisible dog. Well, what's wrong with his dog? I'm scared to death all the time I'm going to step on him. There you are. Just right. Hi, doggies, Lon, don't you reckon we ought to get a lawyer to handle this for her? With Mr. Gimple here to advise us? I'm Justice of the Peace down home, used to handling legal matters. Well, about all you ever do, Lom, is do some marrying or try somebody for killing a deer out of season or something. I'll phone the superintendent of the bar building for an appointment. Ah. Hello? Uh, give me the bar building. No, 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 not the bar, the bar building. But, Mr. Fleming, we're not dealing with small fry now. <laughs> Someone else in the picture. Their financial advisor. Offering <laughs> 10000 to start with and then go on from there. But don't be no. too... Oh! <laughs> oh, Mr. Edwards. <laughs> how are you? Right. How are you? Uh, shake hands with Mr. Fleming. Well, well, how do you do? Well, sit down. Make your acquaintance. Thank you. That's why I want you to sit down, uh, Mr. Yeah. Edwards. Sit down. There. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> oh, pardon me. I just asked you that, didn't I? <laughs> See, I wasn't the one that was hurt. Uh, uh, no. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> now, uh, <clears throat> about this uh, uh, settlement, uh, Mr. Edwards, have you considered any definite amount? Well, uh... I want you fellas to know I'm sort of used to dealing in big figures. Oh, well, quite so. <laughs> of, course, of course, I understand that. Now, uh, <clears throat> suppose, uh, suppose I start with uh, ten. Ten? Uh, yes. <laughs> Can I think that's a very fair offer? Comes down right measly to me. Chicken feed. Well, uh, I could go as high as uh, twelve. Twelve? Mm-hmm. I, Granny, I believe we'd do better by carrying it to court. Uh, oh, now, <laughs> now, don't be hasty, Mr. Edwards. <laughs> Well, uh, then, if you'll just give us some idea of, uh, well, uh, I've been sort of turning it over in my mind. Seventy-five dollars is my price. Yes, sir. Uh, did you say seventy-five dollars? Well, sixty-five, then, but not a cent less. And cash money, too. <coughs> well, you certainly drive a hard bargain, Mr. Edwards. Uh, well, like I told you, I'm sort of used to dealing in big figures. Hi, right, Granny's Abner. I got sixty-five dollars. Sixty-five dollars? Yes, sir. Is that all? Is that all? He tried to get me to take ten, but that's too sharp for him. <laughs> How do you do? I'm from the classified ad agency. You owe us sixty-four dollars and fifty cents for the ad you took out of the morning papers. Uh, uh, sixty-five, did you say? Yeah. Thank you very much. Here's uh, fifty cents change, and your receipt all made out. Thank you again, gentlemen. Not at all, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. We ought to have a collector like him down at the Jotham Down store. Wouldn't hurt nothing. Well, <laughs> we got this out of it anyway. Yeah. Uh-oh. That's our ring, ain't it? I don't know. I never paid no attention. I'm trying to find it. Jotham Down, I mean, uh, Lum Edwards talking. I told you, Lum, I found a dime and a lipstick. Who? Well, good. Uh, hold her there for me. I mean, uh, tell her to wait there for me. I'll be right down. Yeah, much obliged. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Edwards. Where is she? Huh? I mean, Miss Corman. Oh, she's in the grill room having lunch. I suppose you'll want some flowers sent in. Flower. Uh oh, yes, that would be nice, but tell you the truth, I'm a little short in cash right now. Why, that's all right. Just charge it on the bill. And anything else, whatever it is, we'll pay for it. Flowers, theater tickets, a ballet service. A and you pay for it? Yes, yeah, just Ritz more service. And by the way, there's a fine play at the Grand Theater. I'm sure your lady friend is lying. My lady? Yes. Oh. <laughs> you reckon she would sure now? They all do. The play's the thing, you know. <laughs> Did you bring your dinner clothes? No, I, I just eat and eat. Eat it? Yes. <laughs> but you wouldn't like to sit in the box without a tuxedo. Oh, no. Of course no. not. <laughs> all right, I'll have the tailor call on you. Tailor? Just writs more service. Oh. Uh, Maybe you better have him go up and take Abner, Mr. Peabody's measurements, too. Very well. Yes. And uh, while you're at it, get him one of them boxes. I certainly will. We'll take care of everything. Uh, Set a ticket, please.
So you think I'm the executive type, huh? Oh, yes. And so trustworthy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't care if I do. Yeah, I'll light it for you. Thank you. Excuse me. Awkward, ain't I? I want to confide in you, Mr. Edwards. Uh, couldn't you just call me Lone? Lone? Yeah, it sounds better. <laughs> I want you to help me, Lone. I've simply got to sell that house. You see, Mother's so ill, and I need some money now, desperately. Bless your heart. Bless your little heart. I know just how you feel. You will speak to Mr. Peabody, won't you? He's simply got to help me prove the house isn't haunted. Well, you're not, fair lady. The deed is as good as dead. Oh, Don. Oh, uh, Miss Carmen, I want you to meet my friend, Mr. Gimple. Ah, uh, Rover, get away from the lady. Oh, hello, Rover. <laughs> Never seen you jump in. Here. Set up, Bert. Speak. <laughs> hey, sit there. Oh, uh, that's Mr. Gimple's dog. Uh, well, he ain't showing up there. Well, he is there, but he ain't there. Uh, you wouldn't understand about that. But we'll talk to Abner. Don't you worry a minute. Mr. Gimple's pretty good with words. Say some words for her, Mr. Gimple. Sure. Words, words, like fleeting birds. Some are sweet and some are sour. Some are, some are, maybe it's winter. Charming. I think it smells. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, we'll... We, we'll talk to Abner, and we'll talk him into it. Now, don't you worry. Wait a minute, I'll climb up the fire escape with you. Mom, haven't you forgotten something? Uh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Silly of me, is it? Uh-uh, something else. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> well, goodbye, and I'll let you know how we come out. Uh, come on, Grover. Up to you, dude. That's the time. Uh, Mr. Dad, I just called to tell you I've made arrangements for your box. Box? Already? Yes, Mr. Edwards ordered it. I know you'll enjoy the view. Well, all right, send it up. Enjoy. I right, dog is that long, dressing things too much around here. I'm supposed to live till the 17th. Come in. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Mr. Peabody? Mr. Peabody? Oh, I do, Mr. Peabody. Er, uh... Mr. Edwards sent me up. I'm to take your measurement. Measurement? Does a fella have to be measured for something like that? But of course. You want the perfect fit, don't you? So all the people will say, look at him. Doesn't he look beautiful? How long do you want your legs? Well, I'll need them for a day or two yet. 31. Now, if you'll fold your arms in front of your chest, thus. Sorry, doggies, wait a minute. This measurement business has went far enough around here. Now, you get out of here, and don't come back till the 17th. Go on, get out, get on out of here. I'll be back on that day. Well, just get out of here now. I'm getting sick and tired of you fellas trying to tell me how to die around here. Down? Huh? Going up or down? Oh, I won't know till the 17th. We can't wait, brother. Is that it? Yes, sir. Does this belong to you, Professor? I reckon so. I'm feared they got it a little broad across the chest for me, though. What studio do you want this harp took to? Harp? Is there a harp in there? Well, what'd you think we had in there? A dead body? Well, no, not yet. Well, I never know they sent you harps in advance. Well, here, you better bring it on inside and let me get started practicing on it, then. I don't want to get up there and not know how to play. Yeah, this is the room right here. <clears throat> ah, look out for that last step. <clears throat> for goodness sakes, where'd you get that thing? Oh, they sent it to me, Long. Who's they? You know, they. Ah, music is the food and leaven. For a mortal passage into heaven. Burns. Oh, no, Shelley. Well, I don't care who it is. And stop playing that thing, Abner. I want to talk business with you. I've been talking to Miss Carmen about sleeping in that haunted house. No! Here, 
Here's a chance to make a thousand dollars. No. Hello, Abner. No. Er, why, Elmer Kelton. Long look who's here. Yeah, what, well, you old scallywag, you. <laughs> Proud to see you. <laughs> what a fancy place. Oh, yeah, it's right comfort, I reckon. Uh, how's Grandma Masters and all the folks down home? What do you care, you swindler? Swindler? Uh -huh. What about this railroad? Oh, why, we went out and looked at it. It was just a pile of junk, Elmer. Well, just to be honest, we're flat broke. Broke? Hmm. And staying at a place like this. That's the honest truth, Elmer. Yeah? You ain't fooling us, long -metered. And you're gonna pay back every cent that we invested in that crony railroad of yourn. Or we're shutting the law on you. Well, now, wait a minute, Elmer. Elmer, come back. I don't believe he feels good. Yeah, so that's what the folks back home's thinking about us, huh? Must be. Abner, we've got to raise that $10,000 some way or other. Well, all right, Mom. Where's that house you want me to haunt? Or that haunted house you want me to sleep in? Good for you, Abner. I know you wasn't scared of ghosts. Well, I never said that, but I'll go out there. I'll call Miss Carmen right now. All right. Yo, one, Mr. Edwards. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> All right. Oh, really? Well, then I'll come down to your hotel room this afternoon and give you the final instructions. Oh, Mr. Edwards, you shouldn't say things like that. Oh, All right. I'll see you this afternoon. Hi, Granny. Goodbye. Hi, Granny. What does that mean? I don't know. The little guy finally came through. You'd better clear out, darling. I still don't like it, Madge. I hope there's no slip-up. Now, look. Let's go over this whole thing again. The little guy gets to the house at 4 o'clock. He's carrying the violin case. The violin case is locked. And inside is the time bomb set for 4.10. Now, when that goes off, nobody will know who he was. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, I hope you're right. Naturally, everyone will think one of your experiments exploded, especially when they find your identification bracelet on his wrist. So, I'll act like a widow, collect your insurance, and meet you in six months. What about Edwards? I'll handle him. Now, go ahead. Get out of town and hurry up. And don't write. I still don't get it. Guess what? What does this I grannies mean? <laughs> you won't have her out there at the house at 4 o'clock, huh? Mm-hmm. Alone. Oh, he'll be by himself. I'll see to that. And what is it you want us to do with this? Oh, that's a very rare old instrument. I've wanted it for such a long time. And today, the antique shop finally got it for me. Well, good. And I thought that as long as Mr. Peabody's going out to the house anyway, perhaps he wouldn't mind taking it out there for me. Why, of course not. He'd be proud to do that, wouldn't you, Abner? Ah. Uh -huh. But you must be very careful with it, Mr. Peabody. After all, it's a Stradivarius. I thought you said it was a fiddle. Oh, and, and I think you'd better wear this, too. Huh? Oh, no, I don't want to wear an old woman's bracelet. Oh, please, Mr. Peabody. It's a good luck charm to keep the ghost away. Oh, well, I'll wear anything to keep them things away. I was just thinking, Miss Carmen, while Abner's out the house, why don't me and you go for a ride in a canoe? Canoeing. Yeah, they got some dandy canoes out at Lincoln Park. Two bits an hour. Oh, I'd love to go. I'll be there about four o'clock. If I'm a little late, wait for me. Oh, sure, of course I'll wait. <laughs> oh, uh, you're sure of that address now? Yes, Mom. Uh, 820 West... Uh... Laurel, the name of a tree. Oh, yeah, I know. They start with the L. Yeah, I got it. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, I never heard my watch tick as loud as it is today. Say, Sonny, uh, can you tell me where 820 West, uh, uh... 820 West what? Oh, is there, do you know any streets around here that's got names like trees? Yep, there's lots of them. There's Oaks, 
Sycamore, cedar, elm, maple. Uh, that's it. That's it. Elm. I know it started with an L. <laughs> uh, how far is that from here? I've got to be there at 4 o'clock. 4? You won't make it walking. Why not? We got out of school at 3. You must be pretty near 4 now. Oh. Well, it, it reckon you could give me a lift on your bicycle? Sure. If you can fix it, the sprocket slips a little. Oh. Uh, uh, here. Hold that. I can fix that thing in two seconds for you, please. See now. Are you going here to take a violin lesson? No, me, no. I'm having enough trouble trying to learn how to... Say, there's a funny noise in here. Kind of a ticking noise. And it must be termite. She said it was awful old. What did you say was wrong with this? Look, mister, didn't you have an appointment or something? Appointment? Why, no, I never... My dog is, wait a minute. I did, too. Four o'clock, yes, sir. Well, you're late now, and I hate to see you miss it. You can get your bus right on the corner. Back us one now. Hurry! Oh, well, I hate to leave you in this fix, sonny. Well, that's all right. I can carry it home in a paper sack. Oh, dear, I mustn't do that. Oh, she can't hurt it. It's just an old fiddle. <laughs> Let her have it on while she's young. <laughs> Here, hon, play with it all you want to. There. No, 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 Dorothy, my mother. Do you know what time it is? No, I don't. It's after four, I think. Oh, how much after? Oh, I don't know. About ten minutes. Oh, my goodness. Miss Carmel will kill me. Elm Street next. Down. <laughs> Mr. Yes, I forgot your violin. Oh, thank you, thank you. See, Annie? They're in there. I can't get anything. The set is absolutely dead. Maybe Fritz thinks it's too dangerous to communicate with us by radio. Wait a minute. I ought to have had more sense than to ever let Lum talk me into this. There ever was a haunted house this is. Well, I There is someone coming. He's carrying a violin case. A violin case? Oh, then let's send him. Let's use that one before. That means let him in. If you're any good, you'd better do your work right now. Come in, comrade. Who said that? Come upstairs. Oh, if somebody's either talking in here, I've lost my mind, one of the two. Get away with that stuff. Besides, I ain't having nothing to do with you, Mr. Peabody. Scaredy cat. Feared a ghost. Too scared to sleep in a haunted house when I got a chance to make a thousand dollars. I've told you a thousand or a hundred times I weren't a feared. I got up there at the head of them stairs and I... Just drop the subject. I don't want to hear no more about it. 
Well, at least I never got out in a canoe and fell in and catch the pneumonia. What happened? Did Miss Carmen push you in? Now, you just keep her name out of this. She never even showed up. Uh, All right, Granny's, look here, Abner. Huh? Alien saboteurs blown up in explosion. Police search for a mystery man who planted bomb. $10,000 reward awaiting unknown hero. Now, why couldn't we do something like that? Yeah, that's what we need, all right. Here we ain't raised a cent so far, and it's might not time for that you. That lob don't say that word now. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? How you feeling, Abner? Well, I don't believe I ever felt better in my life. Well, that's just natural. Folks generally do feel good just before... <laughs> They do, huh? Well, Mom, will, will they come after me in one of them golden chariots? I reckon so. Will it have gold wheels on it? I suppose. Well, reckon they can get the tars? Well, you'll find out all them things when they come knocking at your door. Do they knock on your door? Mr. Peabody. I know it's here early. Mr. Peabody. How do you do, sir? Uh, we sort of expecting somebody else. I, I'm Professor Albert Frisbee, inventor of the Frisbee rocket ship. Well, proud to meet you, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said you'd take my shoes off. Well, I did, Lama. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one on me, ain't it? On you? Well, which of you is the human daredevil? That's him right there. Uh, that is, if he is human. I have an opportunity for you. Yes, my good sir, you can be of inestimable service to the world of science. Posterity will cherish your name. Well, good for me. <laughs> All you have to do is to ride in my rocket ship and carry a message to Mars. It's as simple as that. To Mars? Yes. And the Frisbee Planetary Research Foundation will pay $10,000 to the intrepid passenger. $10,000? Just to ride in a boat? Did you hear that, Abner? Yeah. <laughs> I don't get a boat trip might not do me no harm. If I just had time to make it. Uh, whereabouts is this place Mars at? But surely you... Uh... Yeah, yes. If you'll come to the window, I'll be glad to show you. Well, it must not be fur if we can see it from here. No, no. Uh, look here. There, in that direction. Well, I don't see nothing up there but a bunch of stars. <laughs> Quite correct. It, it's that one. Oh. Uh, Professor, uh, this boat of yours, does it have gold wheels on it? Gold wheels? It's not what you're thinking, Abner. I'm thinking this is one trip I ain't gonna make till my time comes. This is our big opportunity, Abner. Ten thousand dollars. We can square things with everybody back home. If I was in your position, I wouldn't hesitate a minute. Well, how far is this place, Mars? Uh, measured in light years. This year's measurement. Well, a few million miles, more or less. Doesn't make much difference in heavenly bodies, does it? Millions? Yeah. Oh, I thought maybe it was just thousands. This trip's made to order for you, Abner. When you get there, you'll be right close to heaven. Ain't that right, Professor? In a manner of speaking, yes. Uh, whereabouts is the rocket ship at now? Uh, out at the airport, adjacent to the cemetery. Uh-oh. Mom, this is one trip I ain't gonna make, and that's final. And I don't give this time it is final. You ought never to have said cemetery. Ladies and gentlemen, you have all had an opportunity to inspect the Frisbee rocket ship. My assistant, Professor Plunkett, is at the moment superintending the loading of the powerful charge that will send the ship on its long journey into space. I feel like I'm committing murder. This guy must be wacky. No, Plunkett, no, Plunkett, aren't we ready yet? Say, Professor. Yes. If this guy does get to Mars, how does he get back? I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Plunkett. Uh, uh, Plunkett, make a note of that. That should be my next experiment. Hey, Sonny, uh, 
You know, if it wasn't for me, Abner wouldn't be making this trip. Oh. <laughs> uh, my name's Lum Edwards. Oh. Uh, fellow scientists, distinguished colleagues, members of the press. Today, September the 17th, marks the, uh, give me a word, like it. No, the realization of man's greatest dream. This occasion will go down in the annals of science as a red letter day, September the 17th. September the 17th? Oh, my goodness. Well, we have with us today a man whose name will be linked with that of uh, Galileo. Uh, Galileo and... Hey, you! He's get away from that! That's the plunger that sets off the rocket ship. Good night! Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Abner Peabody. Oh! Abner! Oh. Where about you at, Abner? No, no, no. Where is he? Where is that man? This can't happen to me. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, what day is this? The 17th? Yes, yes, but what has that to do with it? I bound you, I know where he's at. Uh, uh, you keep the rocket ship loaded and, and this crowd of people here, and you come with me. Oh, dear, dear. Uh, uh, did Mr. Peabody come in? Uh, oh. Did, did Mr. Peabody come uh, That's a nasty cold you have, Mr. Edwards. Doing anything for it? Yeah, it just made it worse. Please, has Mr. Peabody come in here? Yes, he went up to his room a short time ago. Oh, oh much obliged. Uh, come, oh, we oh, must hurry. Mr. Hire. Edwards, uh, uh, have you seen a doctor? Oh, I ain't got time for that. To Abner from Abner, the finest man I ever know. Yeah, I sent me all these. Here lies the honest bones of a man named Abner Peabody. Bones, bones, bones. Say, would you consider changing your name to Jones? Ah. Uh -huh. Abner, you oughtn't to run away like that. Get up from there. We've got to go through with this or we're sunk. I'm going to lay right here and sink in comfort. You can't do this to me. The whole scientific world is waiting. My reputation is at stake. And what about Grandma Masters and all them others? If I was in your position, I wouldn't hesitate a minute. Come in. I'm Dr. Leach. The desk clerk suggested that I... Good grief. What is this man, paranoid? Couldn't say. I never hired. Now, sir, tell me all about your aches and pains. Whatever's wrong with you. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with me. Lum's the one that's ailing. I'm just dying. Dying? Oh, yes, of course. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, don't do that now. Can't tickle. <laughs> Nonsense. You're as sound as a dollar. Get up out of that bed. Huh? Come on, get up like a man. You're in excellent condition. You mean I ain't gonna die? Not for a long, long time, barring accident. All right, dog, did you hear that? <laughs> Congratulations, chum, and salutations. You've just been suffering hallucinations. Please, Mr. Peabody, if it's more money that you want... Halt slow, respiration ragged. In bad shape, old fellow. Old? Where'd you get that idea? If I were prescribing for you, I'd give you about two weeks... Two of... weeks? Did you hear that, Abner? I'm done for in two weeks. You are done for. What about me? What about my rocket ship? Ever well, since I was a boy, back in 1891, right, I dreamed... All right, all right, Professor, this. all right. Come on, let's get out of here, Long. You mean you'll do it? Let's get out of here before oh, he starts on, another one of them long-winded speeches I hear. Now, that Granny Zabner, I know you weren't no coward. <laughs> so long, fellas. Have a good trip. Happy landings in the rocket ship. Well, come on, Robert, let's go back to washing windows. You know, it's a shame those nice old fellas have to risk their lives to save the money of their friends. Hello? Hello, is that the Peabody or Lemmaid was there? No, they just left for the airport. Where? The airport. They're going to take a rocket ship to Mars. Look, I have got to get in touch with them. I've sold their right of to another railroad for $20,000. Oh, for heaven's sake, catch them and stop them now. If they can raise that much money, they don't have to risk their lives in that crazy invention. All right, thank you very much. Goodbye. Boy, get me a cab, quick. Yes, sir. Did you hear that, Rover? 
Rover! 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 Nine thousand... Nine thousand five hundred... Ten thousand. Abner! Abner! Get me out of this thing! I don't get to wait a minute. I'll change my mind. I ain't going to do it. Please, Mr. Peabody. Oh, sir, I can't afford to have Lum take that kind of a risk. Hey, Abner! Don't take that money! This is too dangerous! Abner! Abner! Mr. Peabody, I've devoted my whole life to the perfection of this machine. And now, when I'm on the very threshold of my triumph, you've spoiled everything. Well, Professor, I don't want it fall. Peabody. Oh, am I glad to see you. I've just had an offer for your right away. Huh? Yes, $20,000 minus legal fees and taxes. Uh-oh. How much do I owe you this time? You don't owe me a cent. That's $17,500 net to you. $17,500 net to me? That's right. Why, with that much money, I can pay off them stockholders down home and show them a profit on the invest. That's why I advise you to accept it, Mr. Peabody. I wish you'd have been here five minutes sooner. Good for me. 